Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters and debunkers. We have a beautiful full moon rising here in Phuket, just after sunset. You know, the entire institution of astrophysics or theoretical physics is founded on the premise that stars have mass and that they must be falling. Stephen Hawking points it out in the introduction in his book, uh, A Brief History of Time that this is how the entire branch of astrophysics got going. The idea that stars and wandering stars, and I suppose the moon, are solid objects of mass in the sky, and that in that case they must be falling just as bodies of mass fall through the air on Earth. So, hence we have the idea that the Earth is a ball of mass, matter, that is also falling towards the Sun through infinite space. Of course, the idea of infinite space and a vacuum comes from Galileo's experiments with marbles and friction and, yes, the natural assumption and prediction that, given no resistance, no air resistance even, a marble or whatever you might fire through the air would just carry on going with the force that it was used to get it going. Okay, that's fine, it's a logical, scientific theory, but it doesn't mean that's what's going on up there in the sky when we just see lights in the sky. Yes, we look at the moon and we see a rocky kind of surface and what appears to be a sphere. Yet to attempt to say that we know what it is and how it works is really a futile effort. It's good to think about, it's good to try and work out. It's one of our most natural instincts and fundamental questions that is constantly with us. Why are we here? What are we doing here? How does it work? Where are we? When are we? Very, very important and fundamental questions that one might feel demands answers. But if we get to the realization that there is in fact a physical and mental limit to our understanding of the way things work up there, the big clock in the sky, When we, when we realize this, we can then stop projecting outwards and start projecting inwards. And surely when we do that, we get more meaning, more, more meaningful answers to those fundamental questions of what am I doing here? What's it all about? Why? do we have this physical existence? Because the one thing we can see 
and be sure of by looking at the sun, moon and stars is that they tell the time for us. They tell Earth time. The passage of days, months, seasons, years, birthdays, individual life paths. They all seem to connect to the big clock in the sky and so does everything else on this earth. Plants, trees, animals all live by the seasons, the day or the night. And who knows whether they have any kind of understanding of what the stars are doing. So we end up reaching, reaching a, point, a point of acceptance, submission, a humbling that, okay, there are some things I cannot know. There is a limit to what I can physically do and mentally do. And so then we look inwards and we try to look for meaning to those questions inside. So we know that we have time and the time is told for us. That's the one thing we have. We are born into this physical existence with a certainty that it will end after a certain period. There is uncertainty as to when and how it will end, but there is no doubt that our time on Earth comes to an end. So time becomes fundamentally important to our existence. So anything that distracts us and has us hoping and wishing and aspiring for the future rather than taking care of the here and now and the today is a distraction. That doesn't mean that we become apathetic and just literally live in the moment and not prepare meals or not seek work or betterment, development. But we are led astray with this idea that we have evolved physically from whatever into something else on this very linear timeline and that we suddenly got all the answers to the how it all works with science because scientists found a way to get to the moon. So it's, it's held us back, the, the belief that we have been to the moon has arrested our development and evolution on a spiritual level. The moon landings happened at a time when, you know, America was sending its own people off to go and die here in Asia. You know, committing horrible atrocities. for no reason or no reason that's good enough to kill or be killed for that's for sure and there was then an uprising of shame an understanding of how evil the military-industrial complex is 
how greedy it is and how much it rules our very lives. So they gave us the moon landings and told us that there is something to be proud of, an achievement, a scientific achievement that proves everything they've been telling us about how and why the universe works the way it does. A rock that smashed into us millions or billions of years ago and just happened to end up orbiting us, yet coincidentally tells the time better than a Swiss watch forever. But science tells us it's just a rock. So scientism took that formula, F equals MA, and turned it into a god-like answer to our existence, when really it is just a description of the movement of masses over time. So yes, you know flat earthers are denying science, real science. But there is an understanding that you can choose how to describe it. And you can also choose whether you know or believe something to be true or not true. So F equals MA, force, the force required to move mass is multiplied by the time it takes the acceleration to move that mass. F equals MA. So we drop something and it travels through the air to the ground at pretty much 10 meters per second per second, 10 meters a second squared, or it, it accelerates. So here we have a mass moving through the air downwards at a particular speed, plugged into the equation, which can then at the same time tell us with the assumption that it is mass causing the gravity that the earth is a ball of a particular mass with a center and that force of gravity equally distributed across and outward from the sphere it makes the maths very easy. So then you just assume that those lights in the sky, which if they have no mass, completely obliterates the foundation of the assumption. That's what they did. They assumed that stars and wandering stars, planets, are bodies of mass and therefore they too must be obeying the same laws of physics, F equals MA, that we find here on Earth when we drop a dense object through the 
less dense medium of air.